Um, so I went and got my fingerprinting done and done today. Right. And she was like, Oh my God, I love your dress. You know, she was just like real sweet. Cute. She's like, I love that dress by the way. And I was like, thanks. It's vintage. Cause I always say that. Um, and I was like, it's like a tent dress. So I, and it's like my, one of my favorite house dresses. And she was like, house dress. That's like a go out to a concert dress. So, but I like belt it when I go out to make it look a little more modern. Uh, but it's real cute and it's got these gigantic pockets uh, and do the pockets have little bows on them uh so yeah they got like little ties at the top oh so the gosh. pockets this one came untied but it's just she's like the colors are like spring but then fall yeah and like yeah it's like this perfect come like I and like the flowers are almost summer like because they're kind of yeah. tropical and it's yeah so it's, it's just a good like transition a really, dress I love it so it's been my go-to the last couple of days because the weather's been like I'm gonna be very fall in the morning and yes. 900 degrees in the evening uh, or in the afternoon so it does not make yeah. any sense it's exhausting it is it is so um but okay cool so um hi we're revolution hi. rosies oh, hey. hi. yeah uh <laughs> I'm Betty LaRue hi Betty my name is Vivian Vega Thanks for joining us, guys. We are the podcast that talks about badass women in history, some of which you have heard of, but most of which you have not. So I'm really hoping that today is one that I get to surprise you with and that you have it. So I'm excited. Um, and yeah. We, have, we had advertisements this week too, correct? Do. So doing yes. that? Great. Yes. Um, and actually give me just a second. I do not have our advertisements pulled up. Oh my gosh. I know. Can you believe me um, right now I don't know what to do since our next episode it will be in October I have two to three awesome women to do mm-hmm. and I don't know which I should do I'm thinking of this one particular one not doing her because you had one similar and I don't know I don't know so I'm not going to I mean, like, we're going to have, we have a live show. That we, we do have a live show. Coming up. Yes. Okay. Give me two seconds. Let me, all right. Okay. Let me get back to where I can see you. <laughs> you don't need to I, see me. Bless my goddamn mind. I need to see me at least. You're very pretty. I would want to see me if I look mm. like you. You're so sweet. You're very pretty as well. Mm. You're looking all like glowy. Oh, except for this one pimple. I have one. Oh, lucky you, my face. <laughs> I just, I, I thought that pregnancy would bring me much less of that, but. Oh no, it's not really like that. They like to pretend it is so uh, women I continue know. to get pregnant, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am getting much bigger. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you mine. Yeah, you do, you do your twirl. Oh my goodness, you popped. You like I did. popped. Yeah. <gasps> I'm popped. I feel like you popped since I saw you. Since I, I gave you the cupcake <laughs> this weekend. I know. Yeah, you were just like, because I like I was looking, I'm like, oh, she's just got like a little no, you popped. Yeah. The baby is like well, I hit yeah. 20 weeks in like three days. Um, I have a friend who is pregnant and she's been texting me. Um and just like saying certain things. And she was like, I don't know if this is because she's uh, Mike's Mike's father's wife's daughter. So like okay. his stepsister, stepsister, like my yeah. sister-in-law. Right. Um, but they were adults when they got married. So like the the relationship's not like, oh, we're siblings because they were very grown up. But um, anyway, she's pregnant and she's like, so she's like, oh, I hope this isn't too TMI man, my crotch hurts. Is that okay? And I was like, oh girl, I'm so sorry. I didn't warn you about that. Cause I was mad that no one warned me about that. Cause everyone forgets about it. Yeah. It's totally normal. It hurts real bad all the time. See, like, I, I don't remember that, but it's been almost 10 years. So See, here's the thing though, until she said something, I was like, oh my God, how did I forget the crotch pain? Cause I was angry that no one warned you. So just remember at the end of your, like towards the end of your pregnancy, your crush is going to hurt. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I cried um, because my mom sent me a picture of myself when I was just born, just out of the womb. And I was fucking huge. I was fucking (laughs) so big. 
And I was, I cried. I cried downstairs. Casey thought I was kidding. He thought I was like laugh crying, but I was, I'm so scared. Like Winston was, you know, smallish. He was seven pounds, seven ounces. And like, you know, was about that size. Long, you know, small, I mean, a normal baby. Right. And I'm yeah. like, oh shit. Like, what if this next one is me sized, you know? What if, what if she's, the, I'm trying to remember, like I was seven pounds and some ounces. Uh, I should remember this, but I always forget Hazel's exact size. I'm the worst. His was really um, easy. It was seven, seven. So it was seven pounds, seven ounces. Easy. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know where my baby app is anymore, but I was keeping track of it. I'm, I'm plus I can't freaking see my phone half the time. So whatever. Um, but yes, Hazel was larger than we expected because um the ultrasound technician kept being like oh she's gonna be so small she's like six pounds and I think she was closer to eight. Oh my god she was a good size baby so I don't think she I mean like she was she was an average size baby she wasn't big by any means but we were yeah. told she was gonna be oh man well, when you're I, expecting I, a six pound baby right you get a, a eight pound baby it's definitely different <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you right now uh being that it was the first time I ever pushed anything out of my vagina I had no clue how big she was no it's like the most satisfying shit you'll ever take you're just like oh thank god I know it's done. like you're just like, like uh, oh I know. Yeah, it was so good. Um, and then it's really funny too because like Mike saw her head, and like all you see is like this little like, I don't know. He's like it. It, it was almost like I, from what I was seeing, you would have thought that her head was going to be the size of like a tennis ball, mm-hmm. and then suddenly this it's giant <laughs> head comes out. So he was like, I can see your hair. And they're all like, oh, she's got such blonde hair. She's so beautiful. She's got such blonde hair. And then he just like grabs my hand and is like, oh my God. Oh my God. Because <laughs> he was like. Casey it, laughed the whole time. He laughed. He was it was like, an uncomfortable. Yeah, like yeah, I, can't I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe this is happening. Like, I don't know what, my body doesn't know what reaction to give. So I'm just going to laugh. Yeah. And he was like, I didn't mean it. Like I was making fun of the situation. It was just so weird. <laughs> yeah. Like his brain just couldn't handle it. It was just like, there yeah. is another human being coming into existence like, right now. Like out this of my room now vagina. has four people and soon <laughs> it will have five people. And I don't know how to handle this. <laughs> yeah. So that's fun. Um, Anyways, so, sorry, yeah. I got distracted from it's gonna happen. We're probably gonna keep doing it. So uh so I had a really busy week. Um I I went to an awesome wedding, uh Punks in Love. Um Cute. yeah, friend Rachel, who I met through like burlesque and my band and everything like that. She had a wedding in Cleveland and uh it was at a bowling alley and it was very punk rock, and I think you would have loved it. Oh, that's it was amazing. So cool. So fun. They got so married fun. at the bowling alley. Yeah. Oh, at the bowling cool. alley. Like, and it was a really, really old school bowl, bowling alley to the point where like nothing about the lanes were automated except for the fact that it set the pins back up and brought the ball back to you. You had to like write down your score. Whoa. Yeah. So it was super fun. That was a lot of fun. And like we went to this really cute B and B, which um was like a tea shop B and B, which I thought you would That's absolutely so love. And, I mean, like, right now. Specific, um, and it was a so we had a good weekend. Uh, I made Winston's birthday yes. cupcakes, they were a I, hit. Girl. So glad I had like I was in a panic all last night because the wedding cake I made, like I made my first wedding cake, and the wedding cake I made was at the wedding, it was a Wednesday night wedding. And I'm like, my little sister, um, it was a friend of hers, which is how she heard about me to like message and ask. And she's like, and I'm just like, have they cut the cake? Do they like the cake? Is it good? Did it get stodgy? Is it a little too, is it, is it too dense? And she was like, everyone loves it. Like everyone loves it. The bride loves it. I was like, so anxious. I sent the bride a picture of it when I got it finished. And I was like, she messaged me right back. And when I asked her if she wanted to see a picture of it, but she hasn't messaged me since I sent the picture, like that can't be good. And today was like, don't worry about it. She just got like, like, why she probably doesn't listen to this she's like uh her boss just bought her flowers for the wedding like her bouquet and she yeah. hates her bouquet and I was oh. like that's not better like she already hates her bouquet what if oh, no. she hates her bouquet and her wedding cake but they <laughs> she like it took her like 10 minutes so I was just like not breathing for 10 minutes and then she was like oh my god it's everything we wanted and I sent them a wine bottle oh. I made a label 
on the wine bottle for the wedding. So I was like, thanks for being my, you know, my first wedding cake. Here's a, here's a bottle to uh, commemorate. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yes, noise. It took me like four tries. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Uh, uh, so it was it was pretty big week I got a job since we last were on the podcast I'm going to be a doing what she actually wants (laughs) yeah I'm gonna be a software engineer with JP Morgan Chase which is really cool yeah uh really big tech company so that's amazing I did a hackathon which was so stressful Uh, I I don't even like the name the name gives me anxiety it was, it was 12 hours of being on a conference call with people that you don't know, trying to solve a problem. It I was like that. really tough. Um, but they were really wonderful people. I had a really great team. Um, and yeah. Oh, and another thing that I didn't get to tell you that I wanted to tell you yesterday. Um, if we had got to record yesterday was, uh, I got asked to come back and speak to the latest class at, uh, true coders. So I went back and talked to the class again. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah. And I messaged my, um, my advisor and I, or, uh, the, my trainer, my teacher afterwards, he was like, Oh, thank you so much for doing that. And I was like, Oh, thank you. I hope I didn't ramble too much. And he was like, there's a reason we keep asking you to do these. That's amazing. I yeah. So I mean, shit, you're gonna be a teacher one day or something. You're good. I, you know what? I love to make people feel good, and I like to, um, I like to cheerlead for people. I think like, you know, anytime I can be like, don't worry about it. It's not strange. You're you're doing awesome. Just keep yeah. going. Like anytime I can do anything like that, it makes me feel better. Um, and it's also a really good reminder to yourself. Um, and I try to give myself the same grace and, and compliments and, and encouragement that I give others and it's hard to do. So when I give it to others, it's kind of a reminder to myself. Oh, absolutely. No, I oh. 100% agree that I, yeah. I'm the same way. Cause I, you know, I always talk shit to myself. All, and you all are such a supportive friend. <laughs> you are such a supportive friend. Well, you were my first customer. I didn't know that. Yeah, you were my first customer. Well, and then my yeah. second customer was a wedding cake. Oh, you went from a nine-year-old's birthday to a wedding cake. Yeah. So it was it was intense, but it was fun. Um, yeah. And it was funny. I was telling the class when I was talking to them yesterday uh, about, you know, like job hunting and how it's going to be stressful and how you're going to start downing yourself. And I was like, and you might decide like, screw it. I'm just going to make cakes. And then you end up making your first wedding cake the day, the week that you get a a job and you're panicked about. (laughs) You know what? I think honestly, Casey and I live by this. If you put what you really, really, really want, like kind of to the back of your mind, not stop thinking about it, but like, you know what, I'm going to stop stressing about this and make cakes or, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to focus on TikToks or whatever you think is so yeah. flippant, that thing in the back of your mind, because you're not needing it as much because then becomes, yeah, yeah, honestly, we have done that so many times. Of course, we've done that not at all before. And we totally focused on the one thing yeah. and then, you know, put too much thought into it. And then we were disappointed in it or whatever. But honestly, 100%, if you are like, oh, I'm struggling with money. Well, if you're sh- put stressed. Else. If, yeah. I'm going to say you, I mean, like if you were super stressed with something that's like just on the forefront of your mind, like I bake and I cook when I'm stressed. Yeah. And I was like, fine. I'll just sell people cakes and it'll help me stay focused and like yeah. not be so stressed. So like focusing something on something that's going to like ease you, it kind of gets you to your goal faster. Cause oh, you're absolutely. not like, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. 100%. I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of like if you stub your toe, right. And you're like, ah, my toe. And then somebody punches you in the arm, takes your pain away from your toe. Exactly. Well, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to, yeah, we're going to get started, but first, uh, our first ad today oh. is from, uh, you're like, what's happening? <laughs> but first, uh, more but news. First, more news. <laughs> um, our first ad today is from anti-label clothing. Yes. 
Very exciting. Uh, <laughs> Kelly is an FIDM grad with a degree in advanced fashion design, a Westside native, and a former Project Runway participant. A lover of cats, bourbon, and 70s punk, this girl needs to be our friend. Our friend. I <laughs> yeah. know. Kelly creates unique, one-of-a-kind garments with unconventional fabrics and feminine silhouettes. She calls her style pretty ugly because each piece is crafted beautifully, then deconstructed in some fashion. She also prints a lot of her own fabrics and has recently extended sizing of some gardens up to 2X. You can buy directly at anti labelclothing.com that is a-n-t-i-l-a-b-e-l-c-l-o-t-h-i-n-g.com use code 20 off for 20 percent off of your purchase you can find kelly and anti-label on their website instagram and tiktok under the name anti-label i follow all of them and like she, every she's, a dream. she's a dream she's a dream yeah her stuff is really cool too so cool it's one of those things where i've always been like I don't know if I could pull that off, but now I've decided I'm in my mid thirties and I'm a witch. So <laughs> well, I, I, like I'm a science witch though. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm an alchemist. Not yeah. really, but <laughs> you know what? Alchemy is cool as shit. We yeah. watch a lot of videos on that too, but um, yeah, no, Kelly is amazing. And we actually talked about her. Um, well, I brought her up um, when we did that Columbus covers show, when we talked about women from Columbus yeah, I, she was one of the people I was like, I absolutely have to talk about Kelly. Um, she is yeah. fucking cool. Yeah. So cool. So, so, and her clothing right. is really cool. So check it out, guys. Yes. Um, clothing so, is as cool as she is. Uh, this is the person that I'm getting ready to do today. I'm very excited. I hope you are not familiar with her. Do you know who Mary Jane Rathbun is? Rathbun? Rathbun. No. Mary Jane Rathbun. Perfect. Uh, I don't think. Once you start, I may. <laughs> uh, and you know how I always tend to do women that uh, focus around something that is happening in my life? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I, like, it hit Did me you do after. charcuterie boards? Kind of. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> no, okay, kind of. Okay, um, so Mary it's Jane Rathbun. Parts. Who knew? Who knew that? It's Who knew? A charcuterie uh, human board. It's a charcuterie board. <laughs> She hires sharks to deconstruct humans. Yeah, <laughs> it's really beautiful plate. art. Um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, born on December 22nd, 1922 in Minnesota and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And I have like a little question mark because there's some conflicting accounts. Like was she born in Chicago? But I, I believe she was born in Minnesota and raised in Chicago. Got it. Um, I'll get to my sources at the end because I didn't want to give anything away. All right. Um, to a conservative Catholics in a working class neighborhood. Mary Jane was a rule breaker from a young age. At 13, a nun tried to punish her with a canine and Mary fought back, getting in a couple of good licks. Oh, uh, so she was like- She beat up mm. a nun? Yep, because she was gonna <laughs> beat her with a cane. Oh my God, that's no. hilarious. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> she moved out of her family home and supported herself as a waitress for the remainder of her life, okay? So during her teens, she traveled from Chicago to Wisconsin in, uh, to, 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 the mm -hmm. from, from Chicago to Wisconsin to champion union rights for minors. In the late 1940s, she worked as an activist promoting abortion rights for women in Minneapolis. Relevant to today, unfortunately, still going yeah. on. Sorry, honey. It's still the same. Um, Anyways, during her teens, she traveled from Chicago to, oh, I already said that sentence. Uh, at the beginning of World War II, Rathbun found her way to San Francisco, where she met a man at the USO dance. There's nothing that I found that has like his name. He's, he's irrelevant. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> they married and had one daughter, Peggy, in 1955, divorcing pegging hmm. Love it. divorcing soon after in the late 60s she was involved in the counterculture anti-war movement she's definitely our kind of girl yes <laughs> um so peggy her daughter was tragically killed by a drunk driver in 1974 when she was only 22 oh no um shortly after in need of some extra money uh, the career waitress, Mary, in her late 50s, started selling pot brownies. Oh! 
<laughs> wow. I did yeah. not see it going that way. Okay. I know. <laughs> um, Rathbun advertised her original recipe brownies via flyers around the neighborhood bulletin board. <laughs> Was her she magic- still in San Francisco? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> her magically delicious brownies were very popular. Um, and it's estimated that she was selling over 600 brownies a week for $20 oh. a batch. Wow. Like, that is so many brownies. At this time, Mary lived in the Castro, a predominantly, gray, uh, breton, predominantly gay neighborhood in San Francisco and a housing project for the elderly. Because like, mind you, she's in her 50s um, and she's all by herself. Uh, Mary was never quiet about her goings on and actually her (laughs) friend, uh, her friend Dennis Perron, who he's comes up a lot in her story, even sold them at his supermarket Big Top. Amazing. Yeah. So an undercover police officer discovered what she was doing. It's Uh not like she was being quiet about it. And (laughs) on the night of January 14th, 1981, she was born in 22, 81. Police raided Rathbun's home and found more than 18 pounds of cannabis, um, <laughs> 50, 54 dozen cannabis brownies. And she's and just an like, ass- you want one? <laughs> and an assortment of other drugs. When Mary opened the door, she was she reportedly told the police either one of two things. I thought you guys were coming. Or she just said, oh, shit. <laughs> it was- debated reports on that what were the other drugs uh just that was what it was the cannabis and the brownies oh um so she was 57 years old and wearing a floral apron when she was arrested okay that's adorable i love her that is adorable (laughs) yeah she's really an amazing human and her story doesn't start until her 50s so um the report from the raid uh listed the report from the raid listed 50 pounds of flour and sugar 22 dozen eggs 20 pounds of cannabis and 35 pounds of margarine which is where the other cannabis was in um a furious mary was later quoted saying the narcs may not know any better but that was the finest quality butter (laughs) oh they knew i bet they indulged right the media you, you don't have that many brownies in a police uh station without somebody eating right them. uh the media reporting a re- the arrest dubbed her brownie mary so that was her like nickname brownie mary um so oh, she was sentenced her. yeah she was sentenced to 500 hours of community service and three years of probation after being convicted of nine counts of possession uh, <laughs> she served all 500 hours of community service and three or er, she served her 500 hours in only 60 days wow working with the shanty project a support group with hiv and aids patients that is so perfect yeah so she like started to go in and do her work and it became so important to her that she finished her work in 60 days 500 hours in 60 days and after her hours were over she continued to work with the support group. Her friend, her friend Perron said of her, Mary had lost her only daughter in an auto accident. And now she adopted every kid in San Francisco as her own. I'm going to start crying in the story because I cried a bunch. (laughs) (laughs) So like, just (laughs) beware. Um, So those with HIV and AIDS told Rathburn, her brownies served a twofold purpose of easing pain and boosting appetite. I will get there. <laughs> you got this. I got this. Give me a second. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> okay. She also heard they offered relief to cancer patients undergoing chemo treatment. People donated cannabis to Rathburn and she began baking brownies in the hundreds and distributing them to the sick people free of charge. Wow. Rathburn, her monthly $650 social security check helped her purchase baking supplies. Mary referred to the patients as my kids. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Precious. Mm, She's so, So, hold on. So Mm. she didn't get in trouble again like she's just like I don't give a shit or let me keep going oh okay (laughs) (laughs) 
on December 7th of 1982. So she's 80 now, 80 years old. Mary was on her way to deliver cannabis brownies for a friend who had cancer when she by chance met one of the officers who had originally arrested her in 81. Uh The officers inquired as to the contents of her bag and found her in possession of four dozen cannabis brownies. She was taken to the city jail and held on multiple counts of possession and violation of her probation. The judge said, the judge said, you have to stop the brownie Mary stick. It's over. If you do it again, we'll send you to jail. This district attorney eventually dropped all charges. Um, Beginning in 1984, Mary volunteered weekly in the AIDS ward, Ward 86, at San Francisco General Hospital and was awarded Volunteer of the Year in 1986. I would hope so. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, in New York in the early 1990s, Peron, her friend uh, who had sold his stuff at his uh, grocery store, Mm -hmm. he spoke at a meeting of the AIDS uh, Coalition to Unleash Power, which is known as ACT UP, about the possible use of cannabis to relief of AIDS symptoms, but his words fell on skeptic ears. He told Mary about the meetings and she came and spoke of the work she'd been doing and the relief it brought her sick kids, and they seemed to resonate more with the ACT UP. Mary helped work on Proposition P, which made the policy, or Mary, sorry, Mary helped work on Proposition P, which made it the policy of the city of San Francisco to recommend that the state of California and the California Medical Association make cannabis available for medical purpose and to protect physicians from penalties for prescribing medicinal cannabis. Proposition P was passed with the support of 79% of San Francisco voters on November 5th of 1991. I don't know of anything that's been passed with that many, like, yeses. That that percentage. Yeah. So she's like, well, just think of San Francisco voters at that time. They are seeing what the AIDS pandemic is it's it's they're they're seeing firsthand what's happening to these people right um and mary is a huge advocate and she's helping write these laws because she's like weed is the only thing that helps these people cannabis helps these people that and like you're you i'm watching them die (sighs) anyways on july 19th of 1992 at the age of 70 she was arrested for the third time in casandro california while pouring cannabis into brownie batter at the home of a grower. She faced a serious charge of felony transport. Rathburn's prosecution allegedly whispered, I'm gonna kick this old lady's ass, proposing she be sentenced to five years in jail. But armed with her pot leaf pin, which um, of course I have a picture. She's such a badass. Oh my, oh my God, I love her. Look at her. She's got like, like a that fist. Head. Yeah, she's like, "Here's my brownies. Eat my like, brownies." Hey, as a kid, I beat up a nun. Right? You think <laughs> you scare me? Um, so what is? Uh, so armored with her pot leaf pin that you saw in that picture, um, which was a token from her daughter Peggy uh, that she wore to all of her trials and all of her media interviews, Mary testified that her deliveries were made to assist others in need, not to advance individual greed, that the nobility of her actions outweighed the reprehensibleness of her offense according to the law. With her well-known legacy of charity work, along with international fame as the grandma who bakes pot brownies for Mm -hmm. sick people, the the judge dismissed all of the charges. Amazing. Good judge. Yeah. Uh, That same year, she testified at the San Francisco Board of Supervisors about the medicinal value of cannabis, which persuaded them to deprioritize arresting medical cannabis providers. Um, And then in in August 25th of 1992, so this all is happening in 92. Mm -hmm. um, But, oh yeah, I'm sorry. August 25th, 1992 was unanimously voted as Brownie Mary Day, which is still <laughs> annually celebrated in San Francisco. Oh my gosh. So she I has her that. own day, August 25th. We just missed it. We, um, no, dang it. So I I'm think thinking I, this is the wrong month. And I'm, I don't, I'm super lost. <laughs> I am so confused. I'm so confused. Yeah. 
anyways, um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're fine. So yeah, so now she has her own day. Um, so on her first namesake day, she stood in front of San Francisco City Hall with a crowd of her supporters, swung her arms into the air and said, if the narcs think I'm going to stop baking brownie for my sick kids with AIDS, they can go fuck themselves in Macy's window. <laughs> That's so specific. <laughs> I love her so much. Go fuck themselves in, in Macy's the, window. In Macy's window. <laughs> I just, she's so, she's the most loving human being alive, but also the most badass, angry, spitfire, badass yes. old lady ever. She is, she is what you should want to be one yes. day. You don't know when to, to be a pushover. No. Yeah. You don't need to, you don't have to be a pushover and you don't have to um, be quiet to be kind and loving and, and really, really, she really took care of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this was also the year that Mary helped Dennis open San Francisco Cannabis Buyers Club, the first medical cannabis dispensary in the United States. Wow. Yeah. So That's by 19, right? By 1996, Brownie Mary's own health began to decline. She survived colon cancer. Um, her arthritis gave her chronic pain and she had two artificial knees. Damn. She ate half a brownie in the morning and another half in the afternoon to assist, um, to ease the pain of her osteoporosis, my words, man, um, <laughs> in her knees. So she like would say like, you know, my stuff's the only reason I can walk around. You yeah. Know, she, she, she knows the living proof. She, yeah. 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 Um, she began losing weight and told uh, Dennis that she was considering traveling to Michigan for physician assistant suicide at the hands of Jack Kevorkian. Woo! Through this all, through this all that's happening to her, um, she successfully fought for the Compassionate Use Act of 1996, Proposition 215 in California. The law gave critical patients in California, including those with cancer, AIDS, arthritis, and chronic pain, the right to obtain and use marijuana for medicinal purposes where that medical use is deemed appropriate and has been recommended by their physician. So she was able to help them pass this so that medical marijuana was being literally prescribed. Yeah. Um, and awesome. still that same year, that, that in 1996, that whole same year, uh, she found time to co-author a cookbook with Dennis, her friend Dennis Perron, Brownie Mary's Marijuana Cookbook and Dennis Perron's Recipe for Social Change. Oh my gosh. Love that. Yeah. The cookbook featured recipes for black bean soup, chip dip, spaghetti sauce, and chestnut stuffing, but her own brownie recipe was missing from the book. <laughs> when and if they legalize it i'll sell my brownie recipe to betty crocker or duncan hines she told the new york times and take my profits and buy an old victorian for my kids with aids oh yeah Aww, i love her okay this one's gonna be hard for me this one for some reason hurts my heart um dennis said of mary of course people were dying all the time Sometimes you would just see her walking on the street, streets crying for her kids. <sighs> Sorry. It's okay. Mm. There's a chunk in our history where just, we just pushed these people <sighs> like they were less than human. Sorry. And just what she was doing was an, an enormous help and no one was helping them. Mm -hmm. So it gets me. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, I read a book about it once and uh, this one particular woman who, when you started talking about AIDS, I was like, wait, that's not her name. So I only know of like two people who would treat them like, like their kids, yeah. you know, and like, it's um, so sad it's to think like people would disown their kids for getting AIDS. Like, yeah. Well, no, they disowned their kids before that. And so when they, they were did gay. get sick, yeah. And then yeah. when they did get sick, they had no one. Right. And it's just, and it was so scary and no one was helping them. And the yeah. president at the time was like, let them die. This is, right. this is their, this is their problem. They brought this on them. So it's just let them die. And it's, I, it really gets me. Yeah. 
So, and the fact that she was like, these are my children now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, Especially man. because she lost her own kid. And so she's mm-hmm. like, you know. Yeah. She's, she's always like, had that mothering yeah. need, you know. It's beautiful. It is. It's really beautiful. Anyways. <clears throat> Sorry. In 1997, she was honored as the Grand Marshal of the San Francisco Gay Pride Parade, along with Dennis Perron. After suffering a ball in August of 1998, uh, Mary was admitted to Mount Zion Hospital for surgery on her neck and spine. She recovered from the operation at Davis Medical Center, but received very few visitors. Later, she was confined to a bed at Laguna Honda Hospital, a nursing home for the poor. Uh, Mary died of a heart attack at age 76 on April 10th of 1999. On April 17th, 300 people, including her friend, District Attorney Terrence Helena, attended a candlelit vigil held in her honor in the Castro. Or in the Castro. Helena told the crowd of several hundred people gathered at her memorial that she was a hero who will one day be remembered as the Florence Nightingale of the medical marijuana movement. (laughs) Silly that I'm crying over medical marijuana. (laughs) (laughs) It's not the marijuana you're crying over. I know. (laughs) It's, but. Give yourself some grace. (laughs) Uh, Rathburn often appeared in public wearing polyester pantsuits and she was said to have a sailor mouth. (laughs) I I also think I see myself in her (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So I think that that, that happens too. Uh, you Jane would have Mer- been up a nun for sure as a child. 100%. Uh, <laughs> Jane Meredith Adams of the Dallas Morning News observed that four letter words are an essential part of the vocabulary of Brownie Mary. In 2019, 2019, Governor Gavin Newsom signed SB 34, the Dennis Perron and Brownie Mary Act to Finally. exempt compassionate care from paying state cannabis taxes in California. Wow. Compassionate care programs, the original, mer- mer- uh, the original medical marijuana dispensary have been ravaged by the cost of doing business since California legalized adult use cannabis, often forcing participants to, of the program back into the illicit market. So the problem with medical mar- or with marijuana being made legal in California is that it's being taxed, which I mean, sure, it should be taxed um, right. used recreationally, but because of the taxing, the, the assistance that it was getting was causing a lot of people who really need it to not be able to get it. Right. So we have to keep those people in mind. Um, you know, 100% cannabis should be legal. But you have to have, you know, and I I think it should be taxed. I think it's, you know, like liquor or anything else. I think, you know, but you have to keep in mind the people who really need it and the people that will suffer if it's taxed to a point that they can't afford it and they have to go back to the black market. Yeah, it's a prescription. And if you need it, it's just like you can go to Planned Parenthood without having insurance and still get assistance that you need. Right. It should be the same for that because it helps you. Yeah, absolutely. So but, anyways, but uh, if you are like, I just want to get a good high, that's fine. Just go buy it. Like it's a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, I don't care. Exactly, you know, but exactly. You're going to get like, It shouldn't Deal be treated it. the same as medical marijuana. No. Um, anyways, so my sources were, uh, and this is the reason why I didn't want to read them at the beginning. Uh, Wikipedia, obviously the New York times healthy ish, uh, <laughs> Leaf, <laughs> leafly food 52 high times and weed maps. There it is. <laughs> high times and weed maps i was like uh if i tell her my sources she's gonna know where the story is going if she hasn't heard of mary i don't want her to know where the story no, is going i i didn't know that story at all and so she's the reason why if you're in california and you're listening you can spark up a doobie and no one can say anything because mary fought for that amazing amazing yeah. i wonder if they make any gluten-free special brownies one you know they do could they i haven't vegan- found one you know they have vegan, gluten-free special brownies in California. In California, Come for on. sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's like the the allergy central, right? But uh, so, anyways, that is the story of Mary Jane Rathburn, aka Brownie Mary, 
aka the badass old lady in polyester using four word letter words to take care of her sick kids. I love it. That was such yeah. a good story. I was super excited to tell you about it. She's a really cool person. Um, all of the pictures you see of her are just really fun and wonderful. Um, she would have been such an amazing person to know. And she yeah. touched so many lives and she, you know, I'm like, I was thinking about, it, I'm like, gosh, she helped so many people and no one would know, like she had very few visitors. But then I thought about all the people that she was helping and she touched couldn't mm -hmm. come and they couldn't. see her. They couldn't. Because yeah. they were either still hospitalized or they were dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, she's an amazing human being. And in a time when people were hiding from and, um, you know, justifying the deaths of millions to a horrible disease, she saw compassion. Yeah. And guess what? She was like, fuck you, church. Fuck you, Catholic church. I'm going to show you what real compassion looks like. Yeah, exactly. It's not a nun beating me with a cane. It no. is bringing <laughs> pot brownies to people with AIDS. Exactly. Exactly. So. And giving them to, for free to the cancer ward. Oh my goodness. And I was so excited to tell you that, that I forgot to stop in the middle. And do our second ad. <laughs> do our second ad. Um, cool. Our we'll second ad now. today though. Yeah, absolutely. Our second ad today is for Shade Media LLC. Deborah Shade sells books and consolations around the topic of sex for pleasure. As an orgasm coach, she helps individuals and couples overcome barriers to orgasm. Deborah just released my fourth book entitled Climax, The Power of Great Sex. It is written for the pleasure seeker of all genders and orientations. She is a clinical sexologist and master sex expert located in Columbus, Ohio. You can find Deborah online at DebraShade.com. That is D-E-B-R-A-S-H-A-D-E.com or www.shademediallc.com. And also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, that's TW. <laughs> I was like, what's TW? And You're please, like, tw what? <laughs> Time Warner? Time Warner is not a company anymore. <laughs> oh my and God. please me at shady on top shade media is offering an hourly consultation for 25 percent off they're usually 75 an hour just use the coupon code shade 25 climax is available on amazon and barnes and noble and deborah shade is such a cool person Love I've been friends with Deborah. for years. Yes. I read her first book. It made me blush. <laughs> I think I was <laughs> pregnant when that one came out and I was reading all of the horny books. So I was like, what am I doing this for? I don't, I don't know. Like my dreams big were to already move. so, my, my dreams are so messed up by the time I got to that. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, it, she's, she's great. I love, I love Deborah Shade. You know what? And it wasn't a super long episode. Um, I just want to say, guys, what's happening is in Texas is fucked. Yes. It's really fucked. Um, and it makes you feel really, I'm just really angry. Mm -hmm. I'm very angry. I am like, I just, I, there's so many things that I want to say. And I don't, I don't even say anything online anymore. Cause I'm like, what's the use? You're just screaming into the void and no one cares and it's not going to change anyone's mind yeah um so especially I, when all your friends on social media are basically believe the, on the same, same issue boat. Essentially. Yeah. It's like what are you yeah, telling I just me want to be like, now? i'm just so angry i'm like why don't we nip it in the butt why don't we say if you cause an unwanted pregnancy then you're going to be charged with child endangerment and uh assault with intent to cause bodily harm right why don't we start going after the men who mm -hmm. cause, because it's never the woman, the woman oh. didn't get pregnant, the man impregnated her. So if we want to stop abortions We're at the source. We're constantly pregnant. <laughs> yeah. If you want to <laughs> stop abortions at the source, we should, oh, but it's not about that. It's no. not about that at all. If no. you want to say that the second that the heartbeat starts, that it's a human being, then they should start getting child support the second the heartbeat oh, starts. Absolutely. Then they should start getting tax credits the second the heartbeat starts. Yes. Then they should be able to take out a life insurance policy on the fetus. And if they have a miscarriage, they should be paid out. Yes. If they have, um, if, if, it's, if it's a life that's growing inside of you, then you should be getting food stamps for it. Yes. So where, where's all of, of that? Assistance. 
where is all of that if that well, is and an that's actual not even, life? That's not even touching the you know rape and incest part of it, or no, it's, or the part where like if I deliver this baby, I will die. Exactly. You that know? takes all of that out of it. It just ignores all of it. Yeah. It ignores it ignores the fact that if you die in a car accident, they cannot take pieces of your body to save another human's life without your consent. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. do you have to give pieces of your body while you are living? Without I don't your give a shit. consent, because it's not about it's not about the life. No, it's not about the life at all. It's no. about controlling women. It's about yes. what a man does to a woman stays done, no yeah. matter what they want. Yeah. Anyways. Gotta procreate in this overpopulated world. How dare how dare you kill something? So, but I don't want to end on like an angry note. I just thought we should bring it up because we should bring it up. Sure. Uh, it should be brought up. We're all angry do not do not fuck a republican for the rest of your life absolutely not or or fuck a married one and see what happens when you get knocked up and you'll get an abortion real fast Mm -hmm. um yeah but anyways uh so (laughs) on a higher note though just try to keep the compassion in your life from that brownie mary had yes and not like the republicans in texas have (laughs) right and even if you get arrested three times don't stop making brownies for your kids with aids Yes. Keep I, just, lo- I always, I like that four letter word thing because it could be love or yeah. it could be fuck. Yeah. <laughs> four letter words are essential to the vocabulary of Brownie Mary. And keep that, keep that slogan alive y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It could be love. It could be fuck. You can go fuck yourself in a Macy's in the be, window of a Macy's. It could be shit. It could be shit. You can have the bad days and you can yell and you can scream, but give yourself grace. And- Absolutely and find compassion yeah. and uh smear lipstick and raise some hell bye goodbye <laughs>